Today, I'm talking about For Good, which is another reason that I think the song is so successful. Stephen Schwartz has said that in order to write this song, which is kind of the goodbye song between Alphaba and Linda when Alphaba is going to leave Oz, Stephen Schwartz has said that when he knew he needed to write this song, he sat down with his teenage daughter and asked her, like, how would it feel if you knew you could never see your best friend again? And based on that conversation, he wrote this song. And it's a very simple, lovely ballad, except, no, it's not. The harmony is really uh, dense. So I'm going to look at some of it for you right now. It starts with this, which already we've got those like major sevenths in there, this dissonance, and then this part, which is just completely unhinged. Like to have a composer sit down at the piano and write this bar of music right here, it, it's actually insane because listen to it. So what's happening there, it's like one of the most dissonant sounds in music I've ever heard. We've got on the top line here, we've got Alphaba's kind of musical theme, one of her musical themes, which we're about to hear some about, but um, it's that sound. And we get that sound in The Wizard and I, we get... Also get it into fine gravity. Here we get it on top, and then on the bottom we have this harmony line, which is in sevenths with the top line. When we say that something's in thirds, it means that uh, there's a note that's three notes away, always being played. So in thirds with this, it would be one, two, three. And thirds are very lovely and consonant. Fifths are a little bit are a little bit dissonant sometimes, but not always. It's it's sometimes a little bit weird to have something moving in parallel fifths, like constantly moving in fifths. But if we start here, one, two, three, four, five, we have. That sounds a little bit okay. Sevenths is completely crazy. Like, I want you to understand how insane this is. If we take the bottom part and just move it up the octave, or we take the top part and move it down so that they're in the same octave, right next to each other, right next to each other, right next to each other, right next to each other. Like, the dissonance between those two notes is crazy, and it doesn't resolve or go anywhere. And my theory is that this bar of music kind of represents Alphaba and Glinda's whole relationship. We've got Alphaba's theme, and then we've got this other theme that is in directly, directly in conflict with it. It's, 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 it does not fit together in any logical way at all. But then, somehow, it actually sounds quite beautiful together. And I think that that kind of represents the way that Alphaba and Glinda are as friends. They don't make any sense on paper as friends. One of them is like the popular ditzy rich girl, and the other one is this isolated loner, and yet their friendship is actually something quite beautiful and they're about to sing a whole song about it. So I just spent like five minutes on this bar because I think it's kind of in some ways the most important bar of music in the entire show when it comes to Alpha and Glinda's relationship. Um, but that's not the only weird part of this song. There is some really kooky out there harmony in this song. We start with Glinda going, I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason. And again, here, we're getting all of these like jazzy extensions on the chords. It's not just G flat, it's G flat major nine, and then with an added sixth. Like there's always weird stuff happening in the harmony. For a reason, bringing something we must learn and we are led. 
to those who help us most grow if we let them this is pretty standard even this and we help them in return but i don't know if i believe that's true all of that is pretty standard there's some like interesting you know color notes here that g natural that leads very nicely to the a flat this uh b double flat which falls or raises up to the the b flat there but then here we jump to a totally different key center for two bars where we get instead of all of these flats because we're in the key of d flat we actually get sharps we get a c sharp instead of d flat and then this like b natural and d sharp instead of uh, what would be the equivalent in the key of D flat, which would be E flat. So it's like we go to this completely different key place. And it's all borrowed from like the minor key, basically, of D flat major, which is actually C sharp minor. So this is another interesting thing about music that is important, is that every black note has two ways of naming it. This note is either... C sharp because it's one note higher than C or it's D flat because it's one note lower than D and so again this feels to me connected to the relationship between Elphaba and Glinda Elphaba and Glinda both come at the friendship from totally different places but they end up in the same place there's something about that that feels um that feels true to these characters and their friendship, even though it's very out there. Um, so this is all borrowing from C sharp minor. And then we go back to D flat major. So it's a minor and a major starting on the same note, but it's written in a totally different way because of how the black and white keys line up. It's really weird. And then we get this chorus. Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes a sun. Again, all of these major sevenths and weird intervals. Here we have... We have this, like... This is a tritone, and this is a major seventh. Like, there's all of these really dissonant intervals. And yet, it sounds so beautiful because all of the tension is always released. Then we have the second verse, which is kind of the same thing. Um... And then we finally, we've been borrowing from C-sharp minor. Now we go permanently into C-sharp minor for the entire bridge section. For good. And you can see the pivot here. I have been changed for good. They land on the D-flat, but instead of writing it as a D-flat, they write it as a C-sharp because we're going into the relative minor. And just to clear the air, I ask forgiveness for the things I've done you. What is this? Why is this is not even in C sharp minor? This E minor seven with the G natural. That's not even. That's not. It's out of nowhere. Like, but it builds so satisfyingly. Anymore. This B A cadence you expect it to lead to there, but instead we go this totally unexpected place again. Alphaba and Glinda's friendship has led them to a totally unexpected place. So musically, the whole way through this song, we're like getting all of these like musical metaphors for how their friendship has affected them both. And Ella actually hit the nail on the head with this question in the chat. Do musical theater writers do this consciously or is it subconscious and mainly read into by people after the fact? Most musical theater writers, if not all musical theater writers, have a mind to this kind of stuff, I think, if they are really serious about their craft. They may not be doing it intentionally, um, and, and they may not use the same words to describe it, but they definitely have a sense of, this feels right for this character in this relationship, and this doesn't. They definitely have that that kind of thought process whether or not they use the same words to describe it whether or not um they do it like 
I intending to evoke the exact same response in the same way that I'm describing it? Not sure. But they are aware of how different musical ideas represent different emotional experiences. And if he were to end this song, for example, with a very dissonant sound, it just wouldn't feel right for Alpha and Glinda's relationship because they're tied up with a bow here. They've, they've cleared the air and they've buried the hatchet and they've thanked each other for being a friend. So even though there's a little bit of melancholy and that's why this extra note is there, this E flat, like without the E flat, it would just be D flat major. It would be very normal. And if it was with the dissonance that we heard at the beginning, it wouldn't feel fully resolved. So instead we have the D flat and we get this one added note of bittersweetness because they're not going to see each other again. Like all of these little things are, the composers are very uh, aware of the emotional element of it. And some composers are consciously aware of how the music is evoking those emotions. I'm one of those composers. When I write music, I'm very like, this note is there because it's designed to evoke this kind of emotion. Um, but not all composers do it consciously. Um, but they definitely do it intentionally, even if it's not, uh, even if they aren't able to describe it in the way that I'm describing it right now. It's, it's not a coincidence. That's the big thing. It is not a coincidence. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Marquee is a free weekly Broadway appreciation newsletter with essays, reviews, piano talks, Broadway blasts, quizzes, and more. Sign up for the complimentary or premium edition and learn about all classes and projects at thebroadwaymaven.com. And here's a Stephen Schwartz playlist.